That's one small bump for NASA, one giant relief for a lot of NASA workers. Despite fears of out of this world budget cuts, Washington finally cutting NASA a break and giving the space agency a nearly $800 million budget boost. Not enough to get us to Mars, barely enough to cover the expense for our space station duties just a few miles above the Earth, including today's cargo ship on docking being live by NASA for the whole world to see. So not exactly awe-inspiring, but for the last man to walk on the moon, still encouraging. Gene Cernan welcomes the increase, but Joe Clemente remembers far bigger increases. And Joe should know, the former NASA program development engineer fought for them and got them. Joe, a lot tougher to do that today, huh? Well, apparently there are other things that are demanding the funds. But uh, at that time, you know, I wasn't yet working at NASA when the Apollo 1 accident happened. Uh, I was hired to work on the staff of Dr. George Miller, who was the manned space flight administrator, NASA needed to have a total review of deficiencies that the 204 Review Board had raised and to take corrective actions on all of them. Uh, to do that, I attended daily meetings led by General Sam Phillips, the Apollo Program Director. Also, together with the House and Senate Oversight Committee members, we met with the Apollo Prime Contractors including North American, Grumman, Chrysler, and the NASA Center Management in Houston, Huntsville, and Cape Canaveral. Throughout all those activities, which took some months, I was collecting information on which to base the final report meant to help convince Congress that the design and manufacturing changes were all incorporated. The final report and testimony at, at congressional hearings apparently confirmed that the corrective actions had been taken and a program restart was finally approved. What's yes. interesting about, uh, Joe, I'm sorry, I want, to go, I want to go to Gene Cern on that. Sure. There was a great deal of concern after that Apollo 1 fire that killed those three astronauts on the ground, our first really big known fatalities, right, to the space program. Later that same time of year, we'd see our Challenger astronauts dying, the Columbia astronauts die. so it is a weird time of year for tr these type of tragedies. But but it, with each and every one of these type of incidents, there was a concern on the part of many to say it's not worth it. We got to pull back. It's too much of a cost, this cost. What did you say then, Gene? What do you say now? Well, you know, uh, I, 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 for one, and maybe some of my colleagues, uh, that very cold uh, February day back in 1967, uh, seven when we were burying a couple of our colleagues weren't sure whether whether or not we were burying the entire Apollo program but uh, I think it's a it, it's a tribute uh, that we we lost Apollo 1 on the 27th of January 67 and we were back in the air with almost an entirely rebuilt spacecraft in October of 68 and you know the, the rest is history yeah, we still got on the moon before the decade was out, and you, of course, wrapped it all up for us in Apollo 17, Gene. But, Joe, we really came close to seeing that budget hacked away here after that incident, and you were somehow able to convince those in power that this was well worth going forward. The safety issues had been addressed, but NASA itself was a mission and not a mission that was well worth it. Do you think the same case could be made today, or would you have a much harder battle? I think today it would be a harder battle, but if we did a better job of declaring the benefits that we accrued from, from uh, developing those programs, uh, benefits that accrued into medicine, technological, manufacturing, communications, uh, we perhaps would have a, a better success record today if we could uh, get the public and the Congress to listen to that. Well, hey, Neil, yeah, the Gene. problem is we, you know, we don't have a mission. We don't have a goal. Tell me from, from a taxpayer's point of view and from someone who's very interested in space, what are we trying to accomplish? Where are we going? We're putting six people, and they're certainly not all Americans, on a space station, which is a very valuable asset. But, but we always have to hit people, you right back. We always have to hit you right back. Uh, well, it takes three people to operate, keep 24-7, operate the station, and three people to do science. Yeah. We don't have a mission. We don't have a goal. And we, we don't even have a piece of hardware to get our own astronauts in space. 
you know, how can we focus on anything? You, you know, the public has a right to be apathetic. Yeah. Well, we don't have guys like Eugene and Joe. We certainly don't have guys like you. I understand it's your birthday, uh, Joe, and also I'm told oh. you have a certain son, Michael Clemente, who's yeah. gone on <laughs> to some degree of success uh, handling news here at, at Fox. But is he your biggest disappointment, Joe, <laughs> since the whole space program thing? <laughs> this would be on the air. Yes. No, no obviously. <laughs> okay, well, then we'll you talk, we'll talk off the, the air. Spot, we'll talk off the air. Thank you. You don't spoke... You don't suppose Michael's listening, do you? Happy you, birthday, Joe. You, thank you. I, thank I hope, you. I hope not. Oh, uh, Joe, Appreciate happy birthday it. to you. Thank you for all you've done, Michael notwithstanding. Gene, it goes <laughs> without saying. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thanks, Neil. Thanks, Gene. You're, you're welcome. Thank